Hello everyone. In this video, we will look into the creation of detailing criteria and the different settings to be made under it. Detailing is the process where the program tries to find a bar size and bar spacing that will result in a steel area that meets the area of steel required for the bending moment that the station is designed for. So the first step is to create the detailing criteria. Each detailing criteria needs to be associated with the defined design criteria in the project. This is because the diameter information and the spacing information and other such related data for the mat will be available from the design itself. So let us now create a detailing criteria from here by clicking on the create detailing criteria. A window will be opened where we need to enter the name of detailing criteria, select the element type as mat and select the design criteria. In cases where we have multiple design criteria defined, we can select the desired one from the list of design criteria. However, in this example, we have defined only one design criterion for this mat and hence we will go ahead and select the same. Once we select the design criteria, the general information will be shown that is detailing criteria ID which is automatically assigned by the program. Name of the detailing criteria we provided while creating and the design code with which we created the design criteria. Now we start setting the parameters. The first amongst those is the detailing preference. Under this option, there are six different settings that we make. Let us go through each one by one. The first one is provide mesh. When we set this option as true, the reinforcement that is provided will be in form of a mesh throughout the mat foundation for that surface and layer and extra bars in specific local pockets wherever required. If you wish to understand the principles behind this concept in greater detail, please see the document which could be opened from here. A link to open this document is also being provided in the description below. Next is when we set this option as false, then there will not be an overall mesh provided. Rather, each station is designed independent of every other design station. This could resist in dozens of locations having their own unique bar arrangements and that could make it difficult from a constructability standpoint. Going ahead, the setting that we make here is currently applicable to both the bottom reinforcement as well as the top reinforcement. But however, in the future releases of SFA, this may be enhanced to allow for separate settings for bottom and top reinforcement. The next setting is target mesh coverage. So as explained in the document referred to earlier, this is used as the guideline to determine how much of the planned area of the mat needs to have the mesh rebars alone, meaning no extra rebars. So for example, if the percentage we mention in here is 80, 80% of the plan area will have the mesh alone and the remaining 20% will have the mesh plus extra additional AST. The next setting is this rebar spacing or rebar diameter setting. For this exercise, let us select the rebar spacing option and setting. Through this setting, program performs the design with constant spacing and varying diameter at different locations in the mat. Next, we have the setting for minimum and maximum spacing between bars. 
the spacing that we set here will be used as the limiting values while arriving at the bar arrangement at the time of calculating the area of steel provided. Next setting is the setting for extra rebar. The first setting under this section speaks about how do we want to place our additional mesh which is required over the basic mesh provided. We can either select the option to maintain same spacing as of the base mesh or we can maintain same diameter as of the mesh. For this example, let us select the spacing option. The next setting which tells us of placement of the extra mesh. Now under this setting also, we have two options. First is to provide the extra mesh in same layer or Second is to provide the extra mesh by creating additional layer above the base mesh layer. So currently the first option that is provide the extra mesh in same layer is implemented. And so let us go ahead with the first option to provide extra mesh in same layer. The next setting that we have is the setting for rebar of additional mesh. The setting parameters under this section is same as that of the setting parameters that we have had for the base mesh. The only option which is extra here is the spacing optimization, which leads to further optimization of the preferred spacing. This parameter becomes active only when we have selected the option of preferred spacing for designing the extra mesh. The next setting we look into is the rebar development link. Now here, the program calculates the development link separately for the compression and the tension reinforcement based upon its location that is either at support or continuous or at mid locations. The factors here which are lightweight, epoxy and size factors and confining reinforcement factor needs to be set by the user as per the guidelines provided by the code. We can refer to table 25.4.2.4 of ACI 3.8.14 and 19 for lightweight epoxy and size factors and table 25.4.9.3 of ACI 3.8.14 and 19 for confining reinforcement factors. So with this, we conclude upon this video which covered defining the detailing criteria and different parameters that we have to set within the detailing criteria. Thank you.